A team from the World Wildlife Fund works the night shift to ensure a future for one of the rarest mammals in North America. At the end of this bumpy ride across the Dakota Plains is a colony of mammals still struggling back from the brink of extinction. And our job tonight is to catch ferrets from previous years and then also uh, pick up a few uh, juveniles, uh, young of this year, who haven't uh, been marked yet. See, bright green eye shine. By the light of the moon and headlamps, the team captures the small animals, close to a dozen each night, for a ferret physical. We just set them in the hole. So it's triggered by, uh, we try to make this a, a natural extension of the burrow system when possible, and then it's triggered by when the ferret comes up and steps on this treadle. Because they're very curious animals, and uh, they won't be able to abide staying down there very long without coming up to see what's going on. Okay, this is a juvenile. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, this is a young one, probably a young female, just by the size. How you doing? Okay, buddy, go ahead. The black tube is to coax her into the darkness of the tube. And if she were transponded, if she had a chip in her, you can't read it in the metal trap, so you have to transfer them anyway. Good. Yeah, Travis, I uh, ended up with a female kit. Okay, gas is on. Inside the trailer, the team puts technology and pharmaceuticals to work. We're gonna put a microchip in, uh, do the vaccine. Uh, we'll get a little hair sample so they can do DNA tracking on it. We'll get a swab of the inside of the cheek so they can do DNA on it too. He's got his December vaccine. He doesn't have a plague vaccine. This is like liquid gold almost. This is an, an experimental vaccine that uh, as we've gotten a hold of um, in the ferret program. We know that in lab trials it works very well on black food ferrets. And this is good old Clairol nice and easy natural black number 122. <laughs> Uh, we can put a little, bit, a little bit of black dye on his neck, and then you know it's somebody we already trapped up. We don't have to deal with them. Okay, his head's here. Here we go. We, we put them back in the same burrow from where we trapped them, especially the kits, especially the young of the year, because they're still potentially tied to their, to their mother. You got, you got lucky. <laughs> they usually go right down the hole. That's cool. There's no textbook on how to captive breed and reintroduce black-footed ferrets, so a lot of this was learned by trial and error. Between the 85 and 87, they were able to trap the last 18 black-footed ferrets that existed in Matitsi, Wyoming. Those animals went to a captive breeding center uh, in Wyoming, and that's when the captive breeding effort started. Big male. Let's take a look at it here. We've got a little boy. All the blood, sweat, and tears that myself and a lot of other, other individuals I've put in this program are really paying off. We have wild black footed ferrets reproducing on the ground, a fully fledged self sustaining population here in South Dakota. Uh, it's just one of the most satisfying feelings I've had in my career so far. The team has worked the night shift on this prairie for five years to ensure these black-footed creatures their historic place on America's plains. <laughs>